a 5.56 caliber assault rifle for just three weight slots. That was supposed to be the premise of the K2C1. The fact that it takes up only three weight slots means it could be used in place of an SMG inside the best RPG loadout, the best high mobility assault loadout, and other good loadouts where three weight slots is all you have before having to further sacrifice armor or mobility. But 5.56 provides you with much better range and armor penetration than the pistol calibers used by SMGs, which means better long range performance that was previously not attainable at all for as little as three weight slots. Unfortunately, the last point isn't really true. In fact, it's almost totally wrong and the K2C1 is actually kind of a pointless weapon. In this video, I'll explain why I think so, recommend an alternative, and even explore how it could potentially be buffed or at least how I would do it. For starters, the K2C1 has very weak firepower because it has an extremely low rate of fire. The K2C1 fires 5.56 rounds at 660 RPM, which is tied with the M416 as the slowest across all 5.56 weapons. All other 5.56 assault rifles fire noticeably faster at anywhere between 720 to 750 RPM, so roughly 15% faster. The M4 MWS, which is only one slot heavier at four weight slots, fires at 740 RPM while also having way better accuracy than the K2C1. 5.56 at 660 RPM is very uncompetitive, not just against other 5.56 weapons, but against the wider meta as well. The M416 is able to kinda pull it off because it has exceptional accuracy. But unfortunately, the K2C1 is on the opposite end of that spectrum as well. To put 5.56 at 660 RPM into perspective, the AK-15 fires the more powerful 7.62x39 round at 620 RPM, which is almost as fast, and the UKM fires the extremely powerful heavy 7.62x51 round at the same 660 RPM. The larger calibers also have better armor penetration, which is a stat that I know from experience makes a very big difference, even though I don't have access to the exact numbers. And finally, let's not forget that all of these weapons also have better accuracy than the K2C1, even the UKM, which is a light machine gun. Which brings us to the K2C1's second weakness, and that is accuracy. For something that lacks firepower, the K2C1 also lacks accuracy, which means you're gonna have a hard time even being efficient with what little firepower you have in the first place. It's got this obnoxious recoil pattern. Not only are there these sudden jumps at specific points in the pattern, but those jumps go in completely different directions than the direction of the round that came just before. It's probably the hardest recoil to fight in the whole game, and I'm very much including things like the G36 and the LMGs. The K2C1's recoil isn't super high in terms of magnitude, but it's incoherent which makes it very hard to fight. This is bad since accuracy is key to the K2C1's ability to be useful. Like I said in the beginning of the video, one of the reasons why the K2C1 could be useful is because the 5.56 ammo could provide it with a longer effective range than SMGs. There are many loadouts that could benefit from a weapon with more range than an SMG, but only have three weight slots to spare before having to downgrade armor or mobility. People usually run the Vityaz or SIG in these loadouts, but the K2C1 has the potential to be a better option for that reason, and this is pretty much the only good reason to use it. It cannot compete with SMGs up close since they have better handling and close range firepower, and it cannot compete with other assault rifles either, because even the 4 slot M4 MWS and Barrel 762 are just vastly better in every way. The whole point of the K2C1 is that it's as light as an SMG, but also has more range. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually have more range, at least not enough to justify using it. Better damage profiles cannot uplift a weapon's true effective range if it's paired with garbage accuracy. When you compare the K2C1 to something like the Vityaz, which has insane accuracy, the Vityaz pretty much makes up for in accuracy and handling what it doesn't have in damage range or armor penetration. High accuracy means that while it starts to lose damage at a shorter distance, it's also going to be vastly more efficient with the damage it does put out at any distance. Fast handling means that while it will often have an inferior time to kill, it will also often be able to start shooting earlier than the enemy, who might still be trying to aim down sights or get out of sprint, 
thus it does not need a super short time to kill to still win the gunfight. This is actually especially true between the Vityaz and K2C1, because the difference in ADS time is actually quite large. The K2C1 seems to have standard assault rifle ADS time, which is noticeably slower than SMGs even under the same loadout mobility. The armor penetration of 5.56 is probably one of the most permanent advantages that the K2C1 retains over SMGs, but even that is not as big of a deal as it sounds. First of all, the body armor plate doesn't actually protect the entire torso hitbox, it only protects the front side and it only protects the center area of the front, leaving the edges exposed. This horizontal strip in between the shoulders is actually unprotected, so if your aim is good enough and you have an accurate weapon, like the Vityaz, you can actually bypass the armor completely half the time. In fact, it probably happens all the time without you even trying because that's a very natural place for your crosshairs to end up anyways if you're just aiming center mass. As you can probably guess by now, I very much believe that the K2C1 is rendered completely redundant by the Vityaz, and I think it's ideal to use the Vityaz in place of the K2C1 for any purpose you would use it, since the K2C1 just offers no real meaningful benefit. The Vityaz is vastly better in terms of handling and close range firepower, and it's also the weapon that actually has the longest effective range for 3 weight slots because of its accuracy, especially if you put on a marksman barrel, which the K2C1 does not have for some reason. If you want something with even more effective range, you do just kind of have to leave this weight class behind and get something heavier like the M4 or barrel. At this point I would like to mention that at one point there was a rumor that the K2C1 was supposed to use hollow point ammo instead of the usual FMJ for its primary ammo pool, similar to how the Alpha uses armor piercing rounds and that was supposed to be another thing that distinguishes the K2C1 from other weapons, but for some reason this feature didn't make it into the Season 1 patch. This sounds legit because since the K2C1 in its current state is so lackluster, it's just very easy to believe that something is missing. However, I don't think changing the ammo type will make the K2C1 any better, if not worse. Hollow point rounds increase damage at the cost of armor penetration, and armor penetration is one of the K2C1's most permanent advantages over its best alternatives, which are the three slot SMGs. The increased flesh damage might improve time to kill when hitting targets from the side or back, but time to kill is really only important in confrontations where the target sees you too and is shooting back at you in which case their armor plate will also be facing you. In these cases, the decreased armor penetration of the HP rounds will likely have a larger impact, especially when you likely also won't be able to shoot around the armor given the K2C1's terrible accuracy. You are bound to hit the armor at least once or twice. This is why I think messing with the ammo type is a bad way to balance this weapon. Going from FMJ to hollow point runs the risk of actually making the K2C1 worse, and even going from FMJ to armor piercing can only make it slightly better, and not by enough to offset its enormous weaknesses. I think if the K2C1 is gonna get buffed, it should be to its accuracy and or handling. The recoil is just a little too difficult given that the rest of the weapon isn't particularly good to begin with. Improving its ADS time and or its sprint to fire time will also be a fair buff that makes it more competitive against SMGs and heavier assault rifles, and it should also be very safe to do so. You would have to improve the handling stats by a lot to make it overpowered, considering that it is still outmatched by SMGs in terms of firepower at close range and vastly outmatched by assault rifles in terms of firepower at any range. So that's the K2C1 in a nutshell. The next video will be about the QBZ assault rifle, so please subscribe if you want to see that, and don't forget to also leave a like on this video if you did, and leave a comment if you have something to tell me. Also, let me know if your experience with the K2C1 agrees with this video. That's it guys, thanks for watching.